Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how to build and install the Galileo Extruder using a kit by LDO Motors. Now I'm sure you're familiar by now with the Orbiter Extruder. The Orbiter is a NEMA 14 based extruder, it uses planetary gears with some larger 8mm Bond Tech gears, and a lot of people seem to be enjoying it. Well, what the Galileo is, is taking this awesome little extruder and repackaging it so it fits into the afterburner form factor. Now, LDO Motors has recently come out with a kit which, along with some printed parts, contains everything you need to build yourself a Galileo extruder. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now, opening up the box and taking a look at the components in the kit, you can see the Bond Tech 8mm drive gears that are the base of this extruder. In here, you also have a machined aluminum drive shaft an injection molded motor plate, as well as all the other screws and heat set inserts, along with bearings that you will need to complete assembly of this extruder. The only thing that is not included are the printed parts, which you can find on the GitHub. So go ahead, print those parts off, and let's get started building. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is go through and install all the heat set inserts. Now you can reference the CAD on the location of these heat set inserts, or you can follow along with the instructional video that I'm doing right now. Once they are installed, you may also want to give the parts a quick once over to ensure that all your screw holes and filament feed holes are clear of any debris and are proper size. Using a drill in either two or three millimeters is an excellent way to clean up any of these holes that may not be properly sized. So we have our plastic parts all prepped, all our heat sets are installed, any holes that we had to clear out, we've cleaned up. Now we're ready to go ahead and start the assembly. So the, we're gonna start with the back plate here going to take our drive shaft gear and I do like to put just a little bit of grease on it because it is rubbing on plastic so just some light PTFE grease here and put that into position flip it over put our first bearing on it We're going to take our fixed bond tech gear, the one with the set screw, and put that on. And at this point, you need to make note, if you are building based on the LDO kit, you are going to have this newer style of bond tech gear. If you're building based on an older kit or you've self-sourced the part, or if you're using like this Triangle Labs bond tech gear here, you'll notice that the position of the feed path for the filament is actually slightly different. So to correct for that, there is a printed spacer. If you are building with the LDO kit and this style, you're gonna have the spacer on the top here. If you are building using the older style of Bontech gear or a Triangle Labs clone one, for example, you're going to have the spacer on the bottom side where the mesh teeth are. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what I do now is just kind of locate it over the flat and just screw it down so it's snug so it won't fall off, but you still have a little bit of adjustment because you're gonna have to line up things later. There we go. Go ahead, flip it over. Now you're going to install your three gears here and with the bearing down. And these are greased up as well with a little bit of PTFE grease. You are gonna wanna grease these up a little bit. We take our plastic housing, and this is injection molded. Put that over the top. Everything should move freely. And then you're going to take your motor, and you're gonna to have to line the teeth up. So this part may need a little bit of finagling to get it in. There we go. And you can go ahead and orientate it however you wanna do. So some people I've seen orientate it with the motor wires coming out the bottom. I'm gonna go wires off the top here. Now, looking at it from this direction, we're going to install a 14 millimeter screw here. And then down here, we're actually gonna install a 20 millimeter screw. So you're probably wondering why you're using a longer screw here than you need to. And that's for when it comes to installing your wire cable covers, it actually slides over that. So now we have our back plate assembly and the motor installed along with the 
planetary gears. We're going to rotate it so that the grub screw is facing towards us. And then I'll make adjusting this position a little bit easier later on. We're going to take our spacer, put it on at this point because this is an LDO kit. And we're going to take our second bearing and put that on top of the stack. Now we're going to take the body and slide it on over top. And at this point, you're going to want to double check to ensure that the feed path for the filament through the body lines up with the teeth on the gear. Next, we're going to take this little shuttle piece, install that. Take our latch arm, put that on top. Use a 25 millimeter long screw, install that. And now that we have the one screw installed and everything's kind of squeezed together a little bit, you can just double check that your feed path is good. And if it is, you can go ahead and tighten up the set screw. Make sure everything still moves freely as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the idler assembly. So we do have our second drive gear here, and this one is the idler one. It has pin bearings in there. So you are gonna to wanna to put a little bit of grease in there before putting the pin in. Drop that into the body and then push the pin through and this will distribute the grease. There we go. Should spin freely. Going to drop that in. Install another 25 millimeter screw. Now, if you are building the Galileo with the drag chain mount, you're gonna need to install that now. So take one 30 millimeter screw, that goes through. That's gonna screw into the heat set on your drag chain mount. And then you have a 10 millimeter here in the back. Close your latch, take your tensioning spring. Now this is actually a pretty tight spring. So what I do is I pinch it, the whole assembly down and spin it to get it started and then do it by hand. Now for tensioning, what I recommend is opening your latch, bottom out the spring then back it off one full turn. And that should be a good point for starting reference for tensioning. Lastly, we have our cable cover that indexes over that longer screw from earlier. We have an eight millimeter M3 here. That is to hold it in place. And these last two screws here, these are for actually mounting it to the afterburner. So now that we have the Galileo assembled, let's compare it to the default extruder on the afterburner tool head, the clockwork. So just for comparison weight wise, you're not gonna be seeing too much of a difference. The Galileo with the cable covers comes in at around 200 grams. And the stock afterburner is again around 200 grams, depending on print settings and what material you're using to print it with. But what you are getting is a higher gear ratio. You're getting seven and a half to one, and you're also getting the larger Bond Tech gears. So in theory, this should have better time with flexible materials and should have less stripping or grinding issues when feeding filament versus the stock clockwork tool head. Also, it's planetary gear, which is kind of cool. So now let's go and install it on the printer. Now, when it comes to installing the Galileo extruder, it installs the same as the existing clockwork extruder. If this is a new build, you would simply install it when you get to that point in the assembly manual. And if this is an existing build, of course, you're gonna have to remove your previous extruder, in this case, a clockwork. Now this is an existing build here. This machine's already up and running. So I've gone ahead and disconnected all my electrical, removed the clockwork, 
And now we are ready to install the Galileo. So it installs uh, pretty much straight on where the previous extruder was. Put that into position. Use our two screws here to screw it into place. Remove our cable shroud for now. Go ahead and connect your drag chain. And then you can go hook everything back up and install your cable cover. Now I've already gone ahead and installed a Molex Microfit 3 connector to connect it to the existing wire loom for the motor hookup. So let's go ahead and finalize the assembly and get everything ready for the firmware aspect of the installation. Now one thing to note is with the slightly different position of where the drag chain mounts, you may need to slightly shift your mount point for the drag chain because at full travel it may pull a little too tight and you may run into issues. So just go ahead and ensure that your drag chain is now in a correct position for the new end chain mounting point. And there you have it. We now have the Galileo installed. Everything's wired up. Put our filament feed tube back in. Now we can go ahead and go to the firmware and configure everything for the new extruder. And that is how you assemble and install the Galileo Extruder. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like that smash button. And if you don't want to miss out on future content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. If you want to help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. Also in the description are some links in getting your hands on an LDO Galileo Extruder Motor Kit. If you get it from Printed Solid in the next two weeks, there actually is a coupon code for 5% off. I hope you learned something new today, and as always, have yourself a great day. Thank you.